name is Itonde Kakoma. I serve as the president of Interpeace, an international organization for peace building. It's my privilege and honor to welcome you to this signature COP28 presidency event of Relief, Recovery, and Peace Day, and the launch of the COP28 UAE Declaration on Climate, Relief, Recovery, and Peace, and accompanying package of solutions. Let me welcome with distinct honor our official hosts at COP28, the government of the United Arab Emirates, represented by Her Excellency Reem Al Hashimi, the Minister of State for International Cooperation, for opening remarks. The floor is yours, Your Excellency. Our current system is leaving people behind, especially women, people of determination, children, and youth in LDCs and in SIDS. In many cases, humanitarian actors who are meant to be the last resort become the only resort. But from your perspective, are the top two things you believe need to be addressed to make climate action and specifically finance more relevant in the most challenging of settings? And how can the Conference of Parties process contribute to this? The floor is yours. The global financial instruments put in place after the Paris Agreement must account for situations like Somalia, and the focus should be on structural transformational interventions rather than responses, early warning system, and scaling up climate finance to address the fundamental structural issues so that people can cope and live with climate change. And uh, today I'm here not to present only my voice, but I'm representing and carrying hopes and fears of my generation, which were afraid of our future, that maybe climate would steal our peace. 25 of the most climate vulnerable countries in the world, 15 of those are also on our list of fragile and conflict affected countries. So there's a huge overlap between climate uh, vulnerability, climate crisis, as well as frag fragility and conflict. Thank you again to the distinguished panel for shedding light on these intersections. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished delegates, the launch of the Declaration on Relief, Recovery and Peace today is supported by a set of commitments to taking, as we heard the last speakers refer to, these words into action through a package of solutions. That the UK endorses the declaration and we are committed to turning its commitments into action. It is vital that in responding to crises, we also set out a pathway to long-term sustainable development. And that is why Britain will develop a new and separate fund of up to 15% of our humanitarian aid to build resilience and adaptation. This will reduce the impact of future disasters, helping those directly affected to prepare better and to adapt. Norway fully supports the Declaration on Climate Relief, Recovery and Peace. And keeping with the Declaration, we need to increase the climate finance to the very most vulnerable groups. And that is why that is what Norway is intending to do and what we are doing. Uh, we are doubling our climate finance from 21 to 26. In this endeavor, we will try to deploy as much concessional finance as possible, including through our Lives and Livelihoods Fund. Investments in climate change, resilience and adaptation have demonstrated their cost effectiveness in reducing vulnerability to climate risks. The Islamic Development Bank is committed to promoting an integrated approach that simultaneously addresses sustainable development, climate change, and the, uh, and, and the deterioration of biodiversity. And I think we need to be very much more gender sensitive and be more inclusive in our approaches. And so just this morning, Germany launched a new women and climate security funding initiative together with our partner, the Women's Peace and Humanitarian Fund. 
Our seat funding of 3 million euros provides support for grassroots and for local women's organizations and communities at the forefront of preventing and responding to climate-related uh, conflicts. It's important that investing in resilience building and in development to ensure that we minimize and avoid the fragility would be extremely important. Here from the IFRC, we, st we have established what we call the Global Climate Resilience Platform. We aim to invest $1 billion in the next five, five years in climate-affected communities to build that resilience. The resilience communities minimizes the chances of fragility and minimizes the conflict. That's the contribution we want to make. In my capacity as president of Interpeace, we firmly endorse the de declaration and believe that implementation of the Paris Agreement will only be possible if climate action is conflict sensitive, as my distinguished colleague just indicated. And to this end, we offer as a tangible contribution package of solutions, a partnership with CJ, CGIAR, Focus Climate Security, specifically the Climate Security Programming Dashboard, which will be launched tomorrow.